Hey folks, in this edition of the Kitchen Makeover, I'm gonna show you how to take a very basic looking kitchen island cabinet like this and to dress it up with just a few cuts, just a few tools. It's gonna to be easier than you think. So hang in there. The only equipment that you're gonna need for this is a miter saw or a box saw and a nail gun or finishing nails and a hammer. If you don't have that equipment, you can probably rent it from your local home improvement store. The first step is to remove any existing trim. As you can see, this came off pretty easily. You also want to remove any finishing nails that might be sticking out from the cabinet. Similar to a base cabinet that we have near our kitchen, in the butler's pantry, there was a baseboard trim that was already at the bottom of the cabinet before I framed in boxes. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna do the same look here with the baseboard and then build boxes with horizontal and vertical panels. I started with the baseboard along the cabinet length. We're cutting these angles at 45 degrees. Be sure that when you make your cabinet measurement, you make your cut so that the inside edge of the trim piece is equal to the cabinet length. That way the side pieces will fit together nicely when they're finished. I positioned the baseboard and held it in place temporarily with painter's tape just to keep it from shifting around while I was putting the nails in place. You can either use a nail gun like I'm using here if you don't have one, you might be able to rent one from your local hardware store. You could also use a hammer and finishing nails. It just takes a little bit more time. So I've installed the long piece of baseboard. Now I'm gonna cut this piece for the side and I have an interesting situation. The cabinet extends here uh, about three or four inches out from the base. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a 45 degree cut on this, just as if I was gonna wrap it around the next corner. And because the baseboard is taller than the lip on the cabinet, I'm going to take another piece of baseboard and run it down on the inside, but I'm gonna to have to cut off the top of it with the table saw, just so it'll fit underneath. You could use a circular saw to do this as well. So this is the baseboard with about an inch and an eighth cut off the top and a 45 degree angle so that this can fit right in here. Now that our baseboards are fully installed, we're gonna put in shoe molding around the bottom just to finish it off between the floor. I've already cut these corners at 45 degree angles. I'm gonna measure the other side just to see exactly where it needs to go. Before I nail it in place, I want to make sure I have a really good fit on the corners. I'm going to mark this one on the back where the cut needs to go. And then I'm going to put a directional mark here so that I can remember to cut it at a 45 degree angle that direction. All right, now the final piece. Mark the length, a reminder of the angle, and we'll go cut. Perfect. And we're done with the baseboard and shoe molding anyway. Time for another cup of coffee. Well, we have our baseboards and shoe molding in place. 
The next step is to start building boxes with one by fours. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have one piece at the top edge of the trim like this, and I'm going to have vertical pieces. And in this case, these aren't cut the length. I have one vertical seam here and one vertical seam there. So I'm going to create three boxes with one by fours, two horizontal pieces, one at the bottom, one at the top, and these are going to be cut to length to fit in between. And then we're going to do a similar thing on the end with just one single box. I've already put this trim in place and set it with a couple of nails just because it's complicated for one person to manage it and make it sit up on top of the baseboard. So let's put the rest of it in. I've already cut the 45 on this end. I just want to get it flush up here and you can see there's like a little bit of a gap there so what I'm going to do is slide this forward I'll take a little bit of this edge off just so it's flush I mean you won't find many things in your house that are perfectly square so you just have to do your best to make them fit I'm going to cut this end off here with just a 90 degree blunt end once I frame in this panel on the end I'm going to put a finishing piece on this corner and you'll see what that looks like a little later on. So I took the edge down there just a little bit. You can see there's still a little bit of a gap there. I'm going to fill that in with wood filler as well as the nail holes. Once that's done and sanded down, it's going to be nice and smooth, ready to paint. Okay, the next step is to replicate what we did here on the bottom with the long piece and the two side pieces of trim. We're gonna replicate that up here at the top with one more long board, 45s at each end, and then the piece at each end on the top with a 90 degree cut on the front end, same as we did on the bottom. And uh, then we're gonna put in our vertical pieces. And then we're wrapped up. So same as we did down here, this is going to be butted up against this little edge and then I'm going to put in a corner finishing piece when it's all done to make it look nice and finished. Okay. I said this is certainly easier with you can get a little assistance you don't have to wrestle the board so much okay similar situation to this lower piece this uh, edge here sticks out just a little bit, so I'm gonna have to take just a little bit off, fill in the, any cracks that are there, as well as the nail holes, and we'll have a nice smooth finish when it's all done. So the next step is we're gonna put in vertical pieces here, the same type of uh, one by four wood. So I'm gonna measure this distance here. It's 21 and five eighths and I'm going to cut the board 90 degree angles and it's just going to fit in there flush. You want to be sure to measure every dimension before you cut the board. Don't assume that they're all going to be the same length. There are too many places in a home where things are not exactly square like I mentioned before. On the other end we had 21 and five eighths in length. On this end we have 21 and three quarters of an inch.
Next, I'm going to bypass the end pieces for right now, and I'm going to measure out these in between uh, vertical pieces. There's going to be two, so we have three boxes, one, two, three. Conveniently, there's a seam here that is at the exact distance for each one of them. So I'm just going to go with that, center the vertical piece on the seam, and just measure the distance in each of those, cut those at 90s, and pop them in there. Okay, so for the corners, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have one piece vertically here, one piece vertically here, and then on the edge of the board, I'm gonna cut a 45 degree angle so that they both fit flush, corner to corner or edge to edge, just as these boards did with a 45 degree cut. So I'm gonna measure the height here. Both of these boards are gonna be the same length. And I have 21 and just a smidge over 5 eighths. So we're gonna go with 21 and 5 eighths in a smidge. So on the corners, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have two boards here. You could, if you wanted to, just butt them up against one another. One, either this edge sticking out, or you could have probably this edge sticking out since you're gonna see this side of the island a little better. And then just nail them in place like that. What I'm going to do with these boards is I'm going to cut a 45 degree angle and a 45 degree angle this way so that these two boards are gonna butt up against each other edge to edge the same way that the top and the bottom trim did. Okay, so what I did was I used a table saw to rip a 45 degree angle down the edge of the board. So I set the blade so that it's just touching on this edge, cutting it a 45 degree in. So we're gonna have these two pieces that are gonna fit together just like this in the corner. Uh, I used a table saw, but if you have a circular saw, you can adjust the blade at a 45 degree angle and do the same thing. It's just a little more challenging to get a straight cut. If you're feeling the least bit unsure about cutting at the 45 degree angle, or if you don't have the equipment to do it and don't feel like renting it, it's really not a bad idea just to go ahead and butt these boards up against each other just like this. Again, I would put the side board on the inside and the outside board overlapping just so that when you're looking at it, you don't see the edge of that board. Sure that the joints at the top are flush. I want to adjust these boards here so that this edge is flush. I had to put one nail in the center, and then I'm going to put one nail in the center of this board here. That way I can adjust them a little bit and get the bottom set exactly where I want it. Nail there. Now I can put a few more in just to hold it securely. There we go. One more corner to do. All right, so now we have 
the baseboards, the shoe molding, the one by fours, all installed all the way around. If you're looking for a shaker style look, then this would be a great place to stop, fill in the nail holes, and then paint it as you desire. Because of the cabinet look that we have, I'm gonna add an extra piece of trim on the inside of the panels right here, just to dress it up a little bit more. So to give you a close up view, this is what the trim piece looks like. All it is just has a little slight curve, so it's just gonna finish off the inside. So this is the inside trim piece. It's cut at 45 degree angles on both ends. And this will fit in like that. With additional trim pieces all the way around. Then I continue the process for the remaining boxes. Be sure to measure each individual piece just because there can be inconsistencies between them. All right, one last piece of trim just to finish it off. I'm gonna reutilize this corner trim that I removed from this outside corner edge uh, that I just touched up with the paint just as an interim solution. And I'm going to cut it down just to fit right here along this edge. And I'm just going to cut it off with a blunt 90 degree cut and nail that in place. And then we're going to call it done. Okay. So all the trim is finally installed. Now we need to fill the nail holes with wood filler. Just about any brand will do. So the wood filler is dry now. So I'm gonna sand down those areas where the nail holes and cracks were and uh, get a nice smooth finish. Wipe it down with a lint-free cloth, vacuum it up and then we'll be ready to paint. Okay, so we finished installing all of the wood trim. Have all the nail holes filled, everything sanded down nice and smooth, ready to be finished. So, here we go. Okay, we finished painting the lower cabinets. If you wanna check out the details on how I did that, be sure to look at my video, learn how to paint cabinets with any Sloan chalk paint in three minutes. Be sure to check out part two of the Kitchen Island Makeover. We're gonna replace the laminate countertops with beautiful butcher block and install columns to create a beautiful kitchen centerpiece. Thank you so much for watching Regular Guy DIY. Be sure to subscribe and hit that bell so you get notifications of future videos. Have a great day.